let's now look at V belts. The V belts are made of fabric and coach molded in rubber and covered with fabric and rubber. These belts are molded to a trapezoidal shape and are made endless. These are particularly suitable for short distance drives. The included angle for V belts are between 30 degrees to 40 degrees. V belts operate on sheaf pulleys and these pulleys have grooves cut on them and the grooves on the pulleys are made slightly smaller than the actual V belt cross section angle. This enables the belt to be wedged tightly between these grooves. The power is transmitted by the wedging action between the belt and the V groove that is cut in the pulley. So what we have is we just have a cross section of a, a V belt and this is how the pulley for the V belts would look like. So in this one what we have is we've got multiple grooves cut on the pulley itself so at once it can cater for four pulleys in total. So what we can do is we can increase the power transmitted by the V belt by increasing the number of belts that we have on the pulley itself. Now what happens is there are some advantages of V belts over flat belt drive. Uh, v belt drive gives compactness due to the small distance between uh, center of the pulleys. The drive is positive. What it means is basically that there is no slippage involved. So the velocity ratio is uh, perfect which is simply equal to 1. Uh, it is smoother in operation since there is no joints. So once you look at a V-belt you will see that V-belts do not have any joints and V-belts come in standard dimensions and sizes. Uh, it provides longer life. It can last up to 3 to 5 years. Anything between 3 to 5 years. It can be easily installed and removed. Uh, has a higher velocity ratio. Uh, the power transmitted by V belts is more than flat belts for the same coefficient of friction, uh, contact angle, and allowable tension in the belt. Uh, at the same time, V belts do have some disadvantage over flat belts. Uh, the V belt drive cannot be used with large center to center distances just because. Uh, v belts are heavier in nature compared to flat belts. Uh, v belts are not so durable as flat belts. The construction of pulley for V belts is more complicated than pulleys for flat belt. So what happens is uh, uh, this increases the cost of the V belt drive because the pulleys have to be machined and it takes a lot of time and requires special tools. Uh, belt life is greatly influenced with temperature changes. And one other disadvantage of V belts is that just because V belts come in predetermined size, if you're designing a belt drive system which uses V belt, then what you need to do is you need to first find a suitable V belt that you want to use and then start with your uh, design. It's not possible for you to design something and then determine that okay, you require a length of five meters of V belt, but in the market it won't be available they come in predetermined sizes so you have to be mindful of this uh, the centrifugal tension prevents the use of v belts at speeds lower than 5 meter per second and also at uh, speeds more than 50 meter per second uh, this equation 18 you will use to find the tension ratio so t1 over t2 is equals to exponential and exponential is then to the a value of mu theta divided by sine beta. So for flat belt, uh, what we had is we had our center, sorry, not our center tension, but our tension ratio as T1 over T2 is equals to exponential mu theta. But this time around, what we have is the tension ratio is T1 over T2 is equals to exponential mu theta over sine beta. So again, mu is the coefficient of friction, theta is the rep angle or the lap angle, and then this is the new parameter that comes into this equation which is sine beta. So this sine beta, the way we determine this beta is simply with reference to this diagram that we have here, the included angle of V belts is normally 2 beta. So what you do is when you're calculating your tension ratio, whatever angle is given for the V belt, you need to divide it by 2. So for instance, if you have a V belt, and the angle is given as let's say 20 degrees so this 20 degrees is 2 beta so in this relation in equation 18 
what we'll do is beta would be 20 divided 2 which would be 10 degrees so that's the main catch so in the question it will just simply say you have a v belt drive system uh, the angle of the v belt is let's say 30 degrees so reading that you should know that the 30 degrees is 2 beta so you need to half it if you want to use it in this equation 18 so that's the only catch otherwise everything else remains the same the way we find the power transmitted by the belt remains the same so power is t1 minus t2 into your linear velocity everything else remains the same even your calculation for your ten, uh, centrifugal tension tc is again mv squared if it's maximum power transmission then it will be uh, velocity would be square root of t over 3m then your tc would be t over 3 and so on so everything else remains the same the only difference is that the tension ratio changes so this is something that you need to keep in mind later on we'll do a couple of questions in our tutorial which will make things a little bit easier for you to understand now moving on we'll look at uh, rope drives so this is something new that we're covering this year uh, what happens is you need to appreciate that ropes are also examples of uh, flexible mechanical or uh, machine elements and these are very very important tools even though they seem simple but they do a lot of useful work for us uh, the rope drives are widely used where a large amount of power is to be transmitted from one pulley to another over a considerable distance so considerable distance means the pulleys are at uh, a great distance apart from each other uh, the rope drive systems use two types of ropes one is fiber rope uh, for fiber rope we use it when the pulleys are uh, apart within 60 meters and for fiber ropes the analysis is same as v bell so your tension ratio is again t1 over t2 is equals to exponential mu theta over sine beta so again everything remains the same and another type of rope that is used for rope drive system is wire ropes and you can use wire ropes to connect two pulleys that are uh, at least 150 meters apart so anything between 150 meters is okay and can be handled by wire ropes uh, let's look at fiber ropes uh, fiber ropes are made from fibrous materials such as hem manila and cotton since hem and manila fibers are rough therefore the ropes made from these fibers are not very flexible in nature and they possess very poor mechanical properties uh, hem ropes are suitable only for hand operated uh, hoisting machines such as uh, lift and tackle hooks and etc uh, the cotton ropes are very soft and smooth uh, it may be noted that manila ropes are more durable and stronger than cotton ropes however uh, cotton ropes are a little bit expensive when compared to manila ropes uh, advantages of using fiber ropes uh, they give smooth steady and quiet service uh, they are not affected by outdoor conditions uh, the shaft does not need to be in streak alignment so if there is a slight misalignment the rope drive system would still work the power may be taken off in any direction and you can even take fraction of that power or the whole amount of power in any direction that you please uh, they have high mechanical efficiency so these are some advantages of using uh, fiber ropes for your uh, drive system the next is uh, wire rope the wire ropes are widely used in elevators, mine hoists, cranes, conveyors, holding devices and suspension bridges. Uh, wire ropes are made from cold drawn wires in order to have increased strength and durability. Uh, it may be noted that the strength of the wire rope increases as its size decreases. So if the cross-sectional area decreases, uh, the strength of that rope increases. So this is something very, very important. And you will notice that uh, when you're looking at, for instance, uh, a golden gate bridge which is suspended using cables those cables might seem to be quite large in nature but once you actually look at those cables you'll see that it consists of uh, small wires that are wounded together to make maybe a, a type of a bundle then these bundles are combined together so this is what it means if you have a smaller cross-sectional area the wires are able to cater for greater and larger loads uh, various materials are uh, used for wire ropes uh, and in, in increasing order of strength we have uh, wrought iron, cast steel, extra strong cast steel, 
we've got plow steel and then finally we've got alloy steels uh, it is also uh, good to notice that uh, other materials are used for wire drives as well for instance copper bronze uh, aluminum alloys and stainless steel uh, we have a uh, few advantages of wire ropes over fi fiber ropes uh, wire ropes are light and weight of a silent operation they can withstand shock loads they are more reliable compared to fiber rope uh, more durable uh, they do not fail uh, suddenly uh, the efficiency is high uh, and the cost is low compared to fiber rope. The next part for this particular chapter is looking at chain drives. Uh, in bell drives, there is slippage and in order to avoid slippage, steel chains can be used. The chains are made up of number of rigid links which are hinged together by pin joints. The two dot wheel on which the chain is uh, fixed is called the sprocket. The wheels have projected teeth on special profile and fit into the corresponding recesses that is found in the links of the chain itself. So again what happens is if a large sprocket is driving a small sprocket speed is increased and vice versa if a small sprocket is driving a large sprocket then force is increased. What happens is we need to be mindful that if for this sprocket if it is rotating clockwise this sprocket will also rotate clockwise hence the chain will move in the clockwise direction. Chain drives are mostly used to transmit motion and power from one shaft to another when the center to center distance is short. Uh, good examples of these are bicycles, motorcycles, conveyors, rolling mills and road rollers. Uh, we have advantages of chain drives over bell drive system. For chain drives, there is no slippage, so velocity ratio is uh, perfect. Uh, since chains are made up of uh, steel, or oh, sorry, metal, therefore they occupy less space in width than a belt, can be used for both long and short distances. They have high transmission efficiency. They bear a less load onto the shaft. Uh, cannot, oh, sorry, can transmit motion to several shafts just by using one chain. Uh, and they transmit more power compared to belt drive system. Uh, disadvantage of uh, chain drives of a belt drive system is that uh, chain drive or chains are expensive. Uh, chain drives require accurate mounting and careful maintenance. And what happens is uh, chain drives have velocity fluctuations, especially when unduly stretched. So we need to be very, very careful as to how we uh, use this chain drive system. Uh, then finally what we have is we've got power transmitting chains. Uh, these chains are used for transmission of power. Uh, these chains have provision for efficient lubrication. Uh, the power transmitting chains are of the following types. We've got block chain, we've got bush roller chain and then we've got silent chain. When we look at block chain, it produces noise that links come in contact with the sprocket. Uh, it is used used to as conveyor chains in small at small speeds so what happens is this is one of the most crudest type of chains and you we don't want to use this type of a chain more often and then this is a type of chain that we are more familiar with which is called the bush roller chain uh, strong and simple in construction there is a there is little noise uh, used where there is little lubrication so what happens is in reference to this diagram that we have over here, one is the roller, two is the bush, three is the pin, and four is the link plate. So all of these components, the four components come together and they are assembled together to form one link of the chain. And then what happens is we can interconnect all these individual links to form a particular length of a chain. So again chain drives used on motorcycles and so on and finally what we have is we have a silent chain also known as inverted tooth chain uh, it is designed to remove effects caused by stretching and to produce noiseless, noiseless running uh, when properly lubricated these chains give durable service and runs very smoothly and quietly 
so that's basically all we had to cover in our chapter on belts and chains